Hey guys, my name is Darkwater Killer, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. In this episode of my data pack tutorial series, I'll be covering the basics of loot tables as well as showing you how to create a simple loot table of your own. Okay, I'm in the data pack world, and let's start by going over some of the fundamentals of loot tables. Uh, well, loot tables are exactly what they sound like. They are lists of items that are used to determine what loot is dropped by mobs or blocks or what's generated in various chests found naturally in the world, like those found in dungeons or villages. So, for example, just using this loot, give just give it to itself loot. Here's all the loot tables that are in the game. Um, so you've got everything for blocks, and then there's also all the chests, the different kind of loot you can get from chests, and finally all the different entity loots in the game. And so that's basically what a loot table is. It's just a list of things. So if I want the loot of a ghast, drop zero items, drop the gunpowder, drop the ghast here, and it just randomly picks things from that loot table and gives them to me. That's what the slash loot command is doing. Um, but let me show you a loot table in action. In this video we'll be changing the loot table of oak logs, but before we create our loot table let's just test the default loot table to give us a frame of reference for our changes. And as you can see, when I break an oak log, the game checks the loot table for oak logs to determine what items should be dropped. And by default, mm -hmm. just the oak log item uh, is dropped, and that's what we're picking up. So we've all seen this before. It's nothing really special. To start off with, we'll create a loot table that mimics this functionality. And later on, we'll modify that and give it our own changes. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, head over to our text editor. So I'm going to be changing the text editor I used to create my data packs. I've decided to start using Visual Studio Code, but you can still use whatever editor you prefer. Because uh, they're at their core, because at their core, both Notepad++ and VS Code are pretty much just text editors. It doesn't matter which one you use. Uh, you could even use standard Notepad that's like built into Windows or something like that. Um, I just prefer to use VS Code because it makes parts of my workflow easier to get through and it makes it faster in most cases. Uh, to start off with, um, because we want to overwrite a default loot table, we're actually going to finally use that Minecraft folder in our data pack. So over here is just a tree view of the data pack for our world and I have it open so under the data folder you've got both Minecraft and in this case of the data pack testing which is where all the recipes we've made in previous videos are located but instead of recipes we're going to be overriding default loot tables so actually what we're going to be doing is in this Minecraft you just want to create a new folder and call this loot tables and we want to overwrite the loot table of an oak log so again, we just make another folder inside loot tables called blocks. And inside this blocks folder is where we make our oak log.json. And over here is just in the text editor. So what we're going to be doing is just creating a basic loot table that overwrites that of the oak log and to start off with it's just going to mimic that so we've got our root tag and then a pools tag which is a list of different pools and we just open a tag here and we will say roles this is the number of times that this loot table this uh, pool entry is run um, it's basically if you want this to like be checked and gone through twice, you would do two rolls, three rolls. Um, but just to start off with, we're just going to do a single roll. And then in here, 
is actually um, the different entries in that loot table that can be picked from. So we've got just a single entry that we're going to be putting in here. And it's going to be of type item. And the name is going to be Minecraft Oak Block. And then just weight is going to be one. What this is saying is this entry right here is of type item. You can also have a type of loot table and call other loot tables from inside here. Um, I'll show you how to do something like that in a future video. And then the name is just the name of what you are calling. So it could be the name of a different loot table or in this case, the actual item name that we want to drop, Minecraft Oak Log. And then the weight is, if you have multiple entries in a single pool, uh, the weight is how often like that item or entry is going to be picked. So if we were to have another entry in this pool and say, I don't know, Minecraft Bruce log and gave that a weight of two. Um, what would hap end up happening is this item would be called and you would it basically breaking an oak log now would drop two out of three times a spruce log and one out of three times it would drop an oak log. But let's just keep it simple. Back to mimicking this and just save it. And so this is our basic loot table that mimics um, the default loot table of an oak log. So we've saved it and let's go back into the game and test this. I'm back in Minecraft and I'll just reload the data pack by running the reload command. Mm -hmm. Wait for that. And now that the pack has reloaded, let's actually try out our new loot table just by breaking this block and an oak log drops so because um, it's dropping an oak log and we overwrote the loot table that actually means that our loot table is working um, if the loot table had any errors in it um, like if I mistyped the minecraft oak log like say I mistyped and put something like that um, the loot table wouldn't have actually dropped anything and so we would notice that hey something's wrong and you would just go back and go through the debugging process of your loot table um, so we now know that our loot table is working it's nothing impressive it's just a copy of the default oak log loot table so, um, but now that we know that's working, we can go and um, make some modifications that make our loot table a little bit more interesting. Mm -hmm. So now we have a working custom loot table, but as I said, it's pretty boring. Uh, let's change our loot table to make it a little more interesting than the mm -hmm. default. Um, in this case, we're going to make it so if we break oak logs with an axe that has fire aspect on it, um, it will drop a piece of charcoal, and I can show you right now. Ooh, I'm in creative, my bad. Um, I can show you that it does not work mm -hmm. at the current moment. So if I break it, it just drops in oak log and we have fire aspects. We're going to change that so that when we break oak logs with a fire aspect enchanted tool, it will drop charcoal as well. So let's head over to VS Code. So I'm back in our loot table that we made earlier. Um, and I'm just adding another pool to our table and in here on top of the regular type item ooh, I forgot to do opening bracket on top of our regular thing so type item 
name Minecraft. This one's going to be charcoal. The weight is going to be one. So on top of all this, I'm going to put it up here. We have a list of conditions, which what a condition is in a loot table is the game checks. Come on, I can't spell and type, or can't type and talk at the same time. It basically just checks um, the conditions on the pool. It checks the conditions for each entry depending on where you define the conditions. And if those conditions are met and true, what ends up happening is the game will go through with and um, drop whatever items are pull from whatever loot tables you have specified. So in this case, to check our enchantments, we're going to use the match tool condition, which um, I'm going to type out and explain when I am done. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm done with our loot table. Um, all I added was basically just this predicate. And the predicate is just it's a tag and the predicate that we're using um, is the enchantments and that's just a list of enchantments that you want to check that are on the tool so I'm checking um, the enchant for enchantment fire aspect of a level with a minimum of one say you wanted to put a maximum on um, how high of a level you can use for this effect um, you would just specify also with a max, but we just want to make sure that the enchantment is at least on it. It doesn't matter what level it is. So that's all this condition does. It's just saying, okay, does the tool that just broke the oak log, does it have fire aspect of at least level one? That's all this is doing. It's pretty simple. Um, there are other things you can do with it that get a little more complicated, but this is just the basics. And this is my preferred method of checking. Um, there's another way of checking that I don't like as much, but um, if you go and read the wiki for this, you can find it and just, if you can figure out how to use it um, and you like that better, it doesn't matter which way you go about doing it. It's just, I prefer this way. So I have already saved and we're going to go back into the world and see if um, this works as intended. Okay, so I'm back in the world and I have already reloaded and we can go ahead and test. So I will break this with my fist and just an oak log drops. But if we break it with a diamond ax with fire aspect on it, it will drop a piece of charcoal as well as an oak log. However, it's not making sure that it wasn't placed by a player or anything like that. Optimally, you would want to have a condition for the oak log to check to see if um, you're breaking it with something that doesn't have it. So you would like invert a condition and stuff like that. That's a little more complicated. I'll show you how to do something like that in the future. Um, it doesn't have to be broken with a diamond X. Um, it can be broken with anything that's got fire aspect on it. So as you can see, I just broke it with a diamond sword with fire aspect on it. Mm -hmm. And I went from five to six and it dropped mm -hmm. the oak log. So um, nothing crazy. Um, mm -hmm. That's pretty much it for this video. This is just part one of loot tables. There's going to be more parts to this because there's a lot to loot tables and it's too much to cover in one video, but mm -hmm. that's all I've got for today. Mm -hmm. That's all I have for you guys today. Next episode, I'll be covering um, entity loot tables and using um, functions in the loot tables. Uh, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next tutorial and future videos. I do on top of this, I also do um, quick little tutorials covering simple things that people ask me in my comments, like, how do you do this? I'll go ahead, and if it's something that I think a lot of people might 
be interested in. I'll go ahead and make a video on that. Um, but just keep an eye out for that. Um, please consider leaving a like, a dislike. I just want to know what you thought of the video. So if you didn't like it, just hit dislike and uh, preferably leave um, a comment saying like, hey, I didn't really like this part about it or anything like that. Or if you did like it, be like, hey, I liked when you did this. Or like, hey, I liked when you showed that there's conditions on top of this so you can check to make sure there's a specific enchantment on a tool or something like that. Just like your guys' feedback really helps and I can't really grow without you. Um, so thanks for watching and don't forget to have an amazing day.